it's Josephine from The Point Shop. We used to have this series called Point Shoe Hacks where I interview professional dancers, how they prepare their point shoes. We're just gonna go through some videos of professional dancers and how they cook up their point shoes. Let's see what everyone does. Point Shoe Hack for Sleep Floor. Oh, yikes. So those are the suede caps. A lot of studios don't allow rosin anymore, so this is a really great tip if you need something that's a little bit more tacky. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> this looks so violent. <laughs> but this is how you make your point shoes quieter for stage. <laughs> the face. Cross it like this. Oh, the loop. This is something that didn't exist when I was dancing because they didn't really have stretchy ribbon. But this is super helpful if you have a quick change because you can put on your point shoes like that. The downside to this is that it doesn't really give you as much support as a satin ribbon, but it is super fun and super easy to do. So there's a lot of different ways to harden your point shoes. <laughs> the wood hardener is one of them. You can do one layer at a time. You can also use jet glue or hot stuff. This is all different ways to make your shoes last a little bit longer. Typically, dancers will jack glue their shoes or harden their shoes at the beginning when the shoe's brand new, or they will wear it a couple classes and then do it. But if you try to do this after the shoes are dead, it's just not gonna work. 10 minute point shoe hack. This is called Frankensteining. And when you have way too much fabric in your shoe to make it look so bulky, this is how you cinch it up to make your shoes look nice and clean. See how baggy this is right there? Like it's baggy on both sides. Oh, and now it's all clean and cinched because you can pull up the fabric a little bit more. This is a great Frankenstein. A lot of times they'll just fold it and sew it, but this one's much cleaner. Yes, Claudia. Okay, she, those look like block heritage. I love that sound. It's so, girl, so scary. So the heritage is actually a really flat shank for a point shoe. A lot of point shoes kind of have a rounded shank, but this one's pretty flat. So she's making it even flatter by cutting out the end, a sewing machine, and the heritage has a pretty short vamp too. So it helps with roll through. I would use point shoes as ballet shoes. So just mm -hmm. old dead point shoe and then you just rip out the shoe. This is kind of like having a demi point shoe. So demi point shoes help you strengthen your feet, but you can also use an old point shoe and take out the shank. The demi point shoes that are sold, you can get more uses out of it. And the best thing about it, it helps strengthen your feet and get used to point shoes. Amen. Chill, it's so cute. Okay, let's see what you do. Okay, that's for your big toe. If you feel like your big toe is slightly longer, it always presses on the bottom of the shoe. This is gonna help absorb some of that shock. So even if your toe is a little bit longer, having a little bit more cushion is going to help you out. So if you have any issues with your big toe pain, then that's what you do. These are ouch pouches. This is typically what I start dancers out with. The ouch pouches are like a pretty good padding option because it's not so thick, but it's also not like the thinnest padding, so it gives you a little bit more cushion. So totally cool with this padding combination. It looks like he crisscrosses his elastic to keep the heel on a little bit better, to give you a little bit more support, to keep your shoes from twisting. A lot of different reasons why people cross their elastics. And, ooh, such a good demi. Look at how beautiful and high this point shoe breaks. So good. Hack if your point shoes die right here. Oh, this is where you land your jump. So a lot of times that part gets really squishy. See how it's soft there? I can push my thumb in. When I get my specials right there, I request extra paste. That's right. It's called EPOT, extra paste on tip. So if that's a customization that I think most dancers actually have, can ask for more paste there so that the shoe stays a little bit harder. Oh, she wears Rapettos. That's a French brand. Um, it's not as popular in the United States as it is in France, but a lot of dancers in San Francisco Ballet, they wear them. So they cut out that little shank so that it bends into the arch of the shoe or arch of your foot. My teacher at San Francisco Ballet School taught me this trick. Yeah, San Francisco Ballet, a lot of dancers wear Rapettos, but for some reason, I don't really see that brand very much in the rest of the country. If you cut that out in the back, it kind of just molds into your arch really quickly. If you do this too much, then it might not last very long. And then the tape is so that it doesn't dig into your arch. 
For some people, it doesn't bother them, but for most people, if the shank is digging in, it could be super uncomfortable. That's so pretty. It's breaking in such a nice place. Lovely, I love it. We did a poetry hack with Skylar a long time ago, and this girl just basically dances in a box. It's amazing watching her actually dance because I know that her shoe's like barely there. Look, she's like cutting out her entire shoe. And remember when you saw the tape down? She doesn't even tape down her shoe, so it doesn't even bother her. This is wild. I was like trying not to scream when she was showing me her point shoe hacks. Studio Professionals. This is a freed point shoe that's in the studio line. Professional usually means three quarter shank. So that's what that means. So she's gonna first take out, so it's already a three quarter shank, so it's untacked and it's a lot softer in the back quarter. So if you just rip it out, then it makes it even softer. This is a pretty typical way of breaking in your point shoes so that you can roll through a little bit better. Again, if you're buying your own point shoes and if you're a dancer in training, you don't wanna do too much of that or you're gonna kill your point shoes. This is to make the dancer feel like it's, she's been dancing on it for a while. How I prepare my point shoes. European balance. With an exacto knife, I cut the satin tips off the box. Sometimes you put the satin tip off so that it doesn't fray. The old shoe, placing it around the box and sew it nicely. So a lot of people darn. Darning improves balance and stability, and also increases the lifespan of your shoe by protecting the box. Now, don't be alarmed. It looks like I'm completely ruining this shoe. I'm just peeling back the heel to show you what the shank looks like. It's very rare that a cat knows anything about point shoes, and my cat definitely doesn't. <laughs> With the heel folded back, I put the shoe on, and I mark right where the instep meets, so that I know that's exactly where I'm going to cut to three-quarter the shoe. There are many different reasons you would three-quarter your shoe as a dancer. If you have a low arch, a three-quarter for your shoe will give more attention to the heel and create a beautiful line. For me personally, three-quartering helps my foot to not sink in the shoe. To widen the shoe, I step on the box. So pretty. Using the infamous jet glue, I glue my shoes so they last a little bit longer. Did you know the point shoe lifespan is around 15 hours of work? So all of that preparation for 15 hours. So pretty. Enjoy every second. So it looks like she also sews on the vamp a little bit to make the vamp a little bit longer and slightly more supportive. This is a beautiful hack. A lot of point shoes too, they break a little bit lower, but if you three quarter the shank, then it gives you a pre-arch. So you can measure exactly where you want the shoe to break. Okay, and those are the point shoe hacks. If you like this series and if you want this to be a series, send us more point shoe hacks and then we'll talk about it. I'll see you guys.